Welcome to the second of four ELCA Churchwide Assembly Bible Study Sessions on the theme, Embody the Word, where we explore the meaning of embodiment in Luke chapter 24. I'm Ben He Yip, and I'll be moderating today's session. We are very fortunate today to have Sally Asar offering her reflections on our theme. We'll start with that 30-minute pre-recorded presentation. And then Sally will join us online to answer your questions about the text and the theme. Before we start the pre-recorded presentation, a couple of housekeeping notes. When you hover near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see three controls, audio settings, chat, and Q&A button. Audio settings let you switch playback speakers on your device. Chat lets you send a message to the Zoom host if you need help with a technical question. We'll also use the chat window to share information with the group, like the link to today's session handouts, which we'll paste there now. The main control you'll be using today is the Q&A button to ask your questions of the session presenter. A few questions to think about while watching. The questions are in the study guide that Sally has provided for us. What does holiness mean? Is there a limit or is it limitless? How does the idea that embodiment of holiness is in each one of us help change our perception of the other? How does that change help us move forward in times of trouble? Now, I am pleased to introduce the presentation portion of today's session with Sally. Hello, my name is Sally Hazar. I come from Jerusalem. I've studied in Lebanon uh, at the Near East School of Theology and then studied in Germany in Göttingen and that now I'm doing my practical uh, studies in Berlin and uh, doing it in a church congregation and uh, we have a um, preaching seminary here as well so I'm currently in Berlin finishing up and hopefully to be ordained in January in my church in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. And it is quite exciting as uh, I'll be the first woman pastor there. And uh, I'm very excited about that. Today, uh, our Bible study on the Luke 24 embodiment um, of the word embodiment in general, um, I've, uh, I've connected it with, um, with my home country. It's something, um, that is always mentioned as I also grew up in a, a multi inter like in a multi religious um, city. It's uh, very it comes often to talk about the resurrection of Jesus, especially when talking to some of my Muslim friends, because it's something they don't understand what um, like the resurrection of Jesus how like this bodily appearance of Jesus, how can he have resurrected? Was he there physically? Was he there spiritually? Like this is something they keep uh, arguing with me about and talking about. And in the end, sure, it's a matter of faith and um, and belief. But um, that's something that's always there, like um, this appearance and the embodiment. And um, so this question, how can it be that his body was restored to the image and likeness of God in which man existed before he fell into material consciousness? Well, it is just who God is, a God who can make everything possible. The word embodiment in general is understood in many ways, whether it's a bodily presence or spiritual presence. Um, 
it's something special and understood in my country maybe a bit different or it, maybe it's not understood differently different but it is seen from the outside in a different way you know because saying that the image um the image of um or not the image but saying that the embodiment of jesus is um also connected to its holiness is what um, a lot of people connect our holy land to because when you say holy land you automatically say say holy land because jesus was there and i will come to that issue later on now the first image um, that came to my mind when talking about the connection of embodiment the embodiment of jesus and uh, holiness um, it's in the image of the Holy Sepulcher. When you enter the Holy Sepulcher, I don't know if you've been there, but when you, when you enter it, uh, the first thing you see is the bed of Jesus. The bed of Jesus where, um, not the bed, but the place where they laid Jesus when taking him off the cross. And and it's, it's made of stone and um, it's like, um, it's just, you see a lot of people there. You see a lot of, ornaments and crosses and necklaces and things you don't really imagine uh, putting there but everyone uh, who's there takes it and puts it there and to make it holy you know so that you um, because this is a place where jesus was put um and so in that way they get somehow part of the essence that um where jesus was and not only people from um like from from the outside, but also people from uh, our churches themselves, like our our community, our Christian community, um, that go there. Even like my grandma took me when I was ten years old, and um, they made me take off my cross necklace and bless it, so that I'm also blessed and be kind of holy. That it should guide me. And this is not the only done. Like, this is done literally. Um, Till now, so uh, you can see that till now that people do that, and it's something normal. And you see a lot of these rituals there. And um, this is one thing, one image that came to my mind: the Holy Sepulcher and how the, because Jesus was there and the embodiment of Him um, being there. But because that's one place it could have been that Jesus was laid, but there are a lot of other places. And because of that, a lot of people just walk around, um, like barefoot they walk about around barefoot um, and so because any place of the land um, could have been holy by the presence of Jesus and I admire that like seeing different groups different people coming to the city and um, even just listening about um, the places that could have been um, or yeah that could have been the places where Jesus was with his disciples and yeah let's say like it's not 100% sure are guaranteed that it is the place um, but we go there we pray there and um, and at some point I wonder it does it actually matter um, if it is the exact place or not is it about us and our faith so just um, it's so like it's something unique to grow up in such a in, in this city and I didn't realize that until I actually studied abroad because I've been now for over eight years outside of the country and growing up there you don't think about these things but so when you when I was in Lebanon learning like studying all the like your theological studies talking about the different areas and um, in Lebanon the people there have not have never been there and they cannot go there because of the po political situation um, we talked like they always asked about Places and how it looks like, and um, and we had we had many uh, arguments um, or many talks about how the land looks, and so it wasn't until that time where I appreciated the land and I appreciated um, uh, the places there. So when I whenever I go back there now, I can see it um, in a different perspective. I would say, yeah. Now, so before that I like I mentioned before like how holy is our land actually if it if it depends on the embodiment um, of Jesus if, if the embodiment makes the land holy 
So it's been now over 2000 years and billions of people have been there. And I don't know, but um, I started wondering, so after all these years, would this would the essence of Jesus still be around? I'm not sure, but I, um, if, um, if it was any other thing, if I was somewhere like five years ago, I wouldn't say that uh, there would be some essence of me lying there anymore. And let's uh, face it, I think uh, with all the science today, I think it's um, not possible that it, that it is um, that something like the essence of something lays there for, for a long time. But I think at some point, this uh, issue of holiness, if, if it does matter, you know, it's just um, sure that scientifically we can argue all we want, but then it's all about the faith, right? It's, um, yeah, I mean, it could be that the essence of Jesus is still lying around there in the, in the country, but it could also not be that way. But at the same time, this isn't the, the thing that sticks with me. What, uh, what sticks with me is more um, why. Why is our land called holy and um, holy land? And this question of what defines holiness is, st is still with me. You know, it's not something that I have come to say, OK, now I know what holiness is because I'm still researching about it, still studying about it. And I, I somehow don't come to an answer to what, what exactly holiness is. But at some point, I, I can tell you that holiness for me is not a place. It's not. Um, it's not. Something we can limit. Holiness is limitless. And um, I see holiness as it was connected to Jesus's embodiment and which we got to know about through the disciples, which we got to with our connection of the church and so on. Um, each one of us got to have a piece of holiness in themselves. And this holiness is what defines the whole, like it's it was spread, like just knowing Jesus is what makes you also have part of his holiness and um, what brings us all together. And um, that's how I view it. And I think it's something beautiful to see um, how everyone, like when you go everyone, everywhere around the world, not only in Jerusalem or anywhere in Palestine as well, um, it's just not, it's, it's, a, it's just meeting different people from different beliefs. Um, talking about um, Christianity, talking about even God from uh, different religions perspectives also gives you different insights and so on. And it's always beautiful. So it's. Yeah, so the whole world is becomes holy because we're kind of spread all over the world and it does. It's not. In one place, but it's not about a place, it's about the people. It's people all around the world where through knowing Jesus, wherever we are, we have a piece of his holiness in us. Then I come to a different, I, to a different perspective um, where I'm, where it also came to my mind when talking about the embodiment and holiness of the land, because it's somehow ironic, to be honest, that in this holy land, you can find the biggest conflicts, wars, and and it's a place where peace actually doesn't exist. The, la the land where Jesus comes comes from and brought and showed the world what peace is isn't there. So there's a in the in this holy land, as everyone calls it, there's a big wall that separates people. There are checkpoints. There's endless suffering of the people that is to be that is seen every day in the land and it's becoming unbearable with how the situation is de developing and how little people know about the land in Palestine and how much um, suffering goes on there every day and and then going there and if you're there and if you're hearing about this and um, 
you can there is always um, one thing that doesn't go away, which is the hope of the people. And I always wonder how how can we have hope still today? And it's also connected all within each other because um, hope is always found in the Palestinians. That any Palestinians you find their hope is the last thing that 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 dies somehow, which which is something I admire about the people that the hope never fa hope never fades away. It's a mystery to me as well, but I would also connect it to the land we live in with the embodiment of Jesus that is to be seen in each and every one of us. And when I say us, I don't mean the Palestinian people, but the people all around the world, you included. We are all connected through our faith. The embodiment of Jesus that we see in each one of us connecting it to what uh, or completing to what holiness actually means it's holiness isn't a small bubble that is around the land and its people it's visible in us people in each one of us where as we are all created in his image and as we all get to know him through our jesus christ now this hope of the palestinians we have Yes, it is through um, through the through our faith and through knowing and having such a big, great community and such great partnerships with around the world, and that show us and embody the holiness of God that we can also have find that we can also find strength in, and um, and something we are happy to have with. I'm happy to have just in general when meeting people and having people come to our land and um, I leave it uh, to each and every one person to say where, where holy land or what the definition of holy land is. And um, yeah, and I would like us to think about some questions um, in terms of what does holiness mean and what does if you have a different, uh, I, I talked about what holiness and how the holiness and embodiment uh, are connected to each other. And I would want you to discuss about this aspect of holiness and embodiment together. And would you, and what, where would you limit for the term holiness? And the second thing, like um, I wanted you to talk about this holiness that is found in each person which or what kind of holiness you find in the person in front of you when you talk to the person next to you or in front of you like what um what's the holiness you find in that person and third question comes from um goes about the hope of the in this world today because we're living in a world nowadays where a lot of things are happening, a lot of wars are around all the world, around the world, and, and not only wars, but a lot of um, issues that are ri rising up. And um, so, where do you find hope? Yeah, thank you so much for listening, and um, I would really be happy to see a lot of you in Palestine sometime. so much for sharing your thoughts on our theme Sally um, and thank you for joining us for this question and answer portion of the webinar. Sally has mentioned to us earlier that um, she was born in Jerusalem and is currently working on her pastoral training in Germany. She plans to join the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land after finishing her studies. She will serve as the first woman pastor in the church and in the country. Sally is zooming from Berlin. We are so glad to have her with us this afternoon, even though it's late night there. 
I'm pleased that um, we have about 160 people have joined us online today. Please post your questions and reflections about our theme and Sally's presentation in the Zoom Q&A panel. Now, um, since I, um, I am the moderator, I have the privilege to ask you a first question. Um, Sally, um, I, I am intrigued um, by the idea that embodiment of holiness is in each one of us. You made a, a statement earlier that Jesus embodiment makes the land holy. But you also challenged a narrow view of understanding holy or holiness. Holy or holiness is not tied or bound to a place. Um, and you're suggesting that um, knowing Jesus can bring us together and participating in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus could also mean participating in Jesus' holiness. Well, you can correct me if I understand you um, 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 wrong. Um, so so that's, um, that's how you think about um, holy and holiness. Now, you also mentioned um, um, earlier that um, you are understanding this or you are developing this idea um, in the context, in the multi-religious context. So have you ever shared um, this idea, embodiment of holiness with um, your friends, um, Muslim or people who, whose religion, who, whose religious uh, traditions is, um, are different from, from your own? Um, and what, what was their reaction or response? So could you share with us a little bit more? Thank you, Wenhei. I'm really happy to be here. And um, yeah, and thank you for your reflection. You totally got it right. Um, and um, yeah, in general, this um, topic of holiness is a really difficult topic that I'm still brainstorming in and, I'm, um, and it has many um, answers. So it's just, you cannot have one answer and there is no right answer, I would say. But let's say um, about um, sharing it with my Muslim, Friends, yes, of course, um, this is something we we have discussed, uh, at least in my circle, uh, inner circle. Um, and it's, and it's always difficult to explain to explain to them like how, how we how we view it, how the resurrection happened, how God interfered in this world, because they're like, sure, we get it, we get the crucifixion. Um, but uh, the, the whole resurrection and ascension and like uh, we can, we cannot like this is this isn't um, something they can grasp. So we keep coming up to the same arguments that it's something they cannot simply understand. And sometimes I'm like, but how, why why can't you? You know. So it's just um, the discussions go to different ways. Like um, and to, to, like um, like then we talk about how God works in this world and then we have many similarities in many different ways ways of how God works and it's amazing but then when we come to uh, Jesus and uh, the embodiment and um, it's always critical and it en ends up in arguments and um, not arguments but you know it's it's difficult to discuss with the two different religions on a topic where you <laughs> where there's no um like there needs to be a lot more done than having these uh, ca casual um, conversations, I would say. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Um, so um, if you have any questions um, you would like to ask um, our uh, presentation, um, um, our session presenter, please post that um, um, in the Q&A uh, uh, box. All right, so um, it's one, if holiness is something set aside as special, how do we envision this specialness as spread widely over the world? Um, so, sorry, Manhe, so you're re repeating a question? So the, the, the question is, if holiness is something set aside as special, so holiness is something mm -hmm. very special, how do we envision 
this 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 special um, um, this specialness um, um, that is spread widely all over the world. Ah, yes, I I know what you mean. So it's um, it's something. Um, okay, before I because it's a bit like maybe it's not clear, but what I mean with holiness. It's um, it, I see it as something that is always there as we are created in God's image, which makes us also holy in his creation. So we all carry it within us and it's something untouchable, something that we can't reach in our um, in our knowledge, you know, that we um, fully understand what holiness is, but it somehow is also embodied in us. So it's not making us holy because we are already holy it's about our perception and our realization of it um, later on so knowing and then it's then it's like knowing god makes us realize that we are holy in that way you know this is all kind of connected and um so this is somehow um what i mean and it, i think w when i'm talking about special it's about um, um, it's about that each person of us is special in a way that we all um, have our different faith or we, we all have faith in God and making us holy somehow. That, yeah. That's a, that's a um, good response. And so relating to that, um, here's another question. Um, what is your sense of what this embodiment of the ministry of Jesus Christ will mean for the church there in Palestine and globally? Um, general, generally, I think um, in, our, in our land, our, um, it's, it is something very special, even with having all the different religions there. Have, it's a city that is very much um, it's uh, that all, it's very important for all the religions and it's always looked at and for our church especially like it's something beautiful to be in the city where uh, all the biblical stories are written in and um the holy holy land uh, as a term i think it's just a term used and it's not um and of course i um because i perceive it uh, as the whole world being holy and i wouldn't limit it to one place but calling it the holy land uh, somehow uh, helps us as Palestinian Christians as well, because we, uh, our land has been occupied since many years now. So it's somehow a protection for our um, Palestinian land that we cannot call Palestine because of Israeli um, forces. So this is somehow uh, some, the term that has become a protection for our Palestinian Christians as well as well, Muslims, but I, um, but for I'm talking more mostly now for the Christians. So the Holy Land is more as a protection for the Palestinian Christians, as we um, as though in Palestine or in Jerusalem, when you say uh, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Palestine, they would like where they would be like, oh, where is Palestine and which and would Jerusalem count it? So it's all about also politics in that in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, I think here are um, um, several questions that still um, 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 kind of the topic about how do we understand holy. Um, so one of those is um, if God has created us, aren't we and the whole world holy? Yes, that's what I uh, said. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because um, because um, earlier we talked about that you you made the statement um, that um, 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 Jesus embodiment made the land holy, but at the same time you also challenge a narrow view of understanding holy and holiness, and it's not it's not tied or it's not bound to a certain place geographically, but then it's knowing Jesus that brings people together. And at the same time, that's participating in Jesus' life, death and resurrection. That's, we are also participating in, in Jesus' holiness. That's, right. that's, um, that's um, what you talked about earlier. Um, and um, so, um, so Sally, could you um, could you also tell us a bit about uh, why is this um, 
topic or embodiment of holiness, this idea exactly, um, why does it matter to you? I think you, 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 you shared you share about that um, a little bit with us because of the context in, in Palestine, right? Mm -hmm. Could you say a bit more? Why does it matter? Why does it matter to you? And why does it matter to the church? And why does it matter to the world? Um, I'll, I'll start with um, it's important for me um, as it's um, it's somehow the base of our, uh, also as well as it's our base for of our faith without the resurrection, um, we don't, uh, I don't see, um, we wouldn't have gotten to know God and we wouldn't be there. And as a small group, as a small Lutheran Christian community in um, Palestine and Jerusalem, um, it's important for us uh, to also be uh, connected with the, it's always good to be connected with the whole world. So it's somehow uh, being Christians there is something that I feel is a privilege and is, is something um, that makes us not feel like we are alone in such a small community in Jerusalem. So even though we're a small church, we're a small community of Christians in Palestine and Jerusalem. Um, it's important, like embodiment makes me realize that we're not a small church. We're not a small community, but we're bigger than that we're all together we're through our faith all right um so um um we got more questions um people are really excited about this idea um so um there's a question about um what do you think about the relationship between holiness and justification Um, it depends uh, on which, uh, how you perceive it, but um, I mean, I think they all, they are all interrelated. So it's uh, definitely something connected when you're, when you have holiness, there is somehow also justification within it. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, um, So that's another, um, so when we talk about justification, we also sometimes also um, would talk about justification and justice. And um, so there's another question that's um, 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 relating to, uh, related to that. Um, holy, it's to be holy, to act for justice. Um, what is that in your view? It's to be holy, is it to act for justice? Um, so it's, it's, so that's, um, 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 uh, we would like to see how you would respond to this question. Um, holiness relates to righteousness, which means to act or to act um, um, in a way that ancient prophets of the, um, um, that, uh, that is set um, in, in the Hebrew Bible. Um, and Jesus himself as a holy man acted for justice for God's people in his liberative practice. So what do you think about, is it to be holy is to, um, is to, um, um, is to, is to um, um, pursue justice? Well, let's say if um, we, we should always stand up for what is right. We should always um, be just and fair with everything we do in life. And um, yes, holiness, I wouldn't say that it's because we're holy uh, or beca not because we're holy, but I mean, just because, like, because it's also, um, we're connecting it to being Christian. So um, being a Christian generally means standing up for uh, righteousness and standing up for um, the truth. And that's what we've been taught. And um, and if we're if you're referring to Palestine and standing up for the justice that is happening there, I mean it's not because I am Christian that I'm standing up for being for for justice there, but it's because it's a human right and it's something um, that is a generally it's um, in general a person would support that um, in order for. Um, like with all the injustices that is happening there, um, doing like talking about justice in general makes us 
go further and move forward in having a peaceful world. So it's um, somehow, um, it's, it just naturally comes along. Like if, if you're if knowing God, knowing is knowing what is right, it, it is standing up for it. It's what brings us to being peaceful together in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, um, Would you like, so is there anything, um, I mean, there are really lots of um, good questions um, in the in the Q&A box. Um, so maybe there are some that, that really um, interest you um, that you might want to um, 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 comment on that. Uh, but also, um, if, you if you would like to um, um, address um, some of the questions that you, you you post, um, you uh, prepared for us, you could also do that, Sally. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm quite overwhelmed with all the questions. I'm trying also to uh, catch up with, and uh, wanting to respond to many, um, to all of the people that have uh, asked the questions. Um, so um, generally, if I'm, if, because I'm talking about suffering and hope in our land, um, it's actually, it's, um, it's because it's I'm gonna tell you something that's actually not that happy but it's something sad but it's actually we got used to um used to the suffering used to the norm of um having to go through um this um the checkpoints the different um the the different the different ways of treatment in the land and you know I did I, I didn't re realize that until I left um, Jerusalem and studied abroad but then coming back and so on I'm like I cannot handle this how did I handle this all 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 my life growing up there because you know and that's the thing that we, we our congregations there are still facing it they are still uh, living it every day and thinking this is this is how it should be this is how, this is why what we deserve and I'm like no this is not what you deserve this is not how we as human beings uh, should be treated. This is not how we should live because we all have the freedom of, of movement. We all have the freedom of speech. And there you don't see that. We're, the Palestinians are still being treated as second class people. And um, it's, it's just, so it's, it's talking about suffering. It's happening every day. But then having this hope, which we in the church, um, um, we're not the ones as, church leaders that are giving the people hope. No, it's uh, the other way around. It's the congregation members that are giving us uh, church leaders the hope and seeing that in them, in, the, in, the, in our society, in our culture, in our congregations that it, ref and it, it reflects who they are and it gives us strength as well as we give them strength. So it's a, um, it's a both kind of relationship um, in, the, in the church, which I really, um, admire and I I love that about my people. Well, thank you for for sharing your um that that piece of story with us. And since you mentioned about suffering, and that's um that could you say a bit more about um how do you see hope in suffering? Um, can you say some more well, that's, about that? That's what I well, that's what I meant in general. Like mm -hmm. responding to that comment, uh, mm -hmm. in um in this. Like, like knowing and having, um, like I feel nowadays we're sharing more and throughout sharing with each other and having the whole world connected, we're um, we're getting, we're having this hope uh, with people speaking more up and um, seeing the hope in um, in our churches where they find it. Mm -hmm. Um. So if we can, if we could connect that uh, hope with um, your idea um, um, embodiment of holiness, and so that's that's that this um, this idea embodiment of holiness, and as you as you say that that actually could change um, our way of thinking about and looking at others, and so by that for that change and with that change. 
that could actually give us hope to move forward because even though people are different, they might have different religious um, um, traditions and, and um, um, other things else. Um, but then this piece that holiness is in each one of us and that is embodied in each one of us that actually it's something that would connect us together. And so that's how you see that hope it's there when people are connected together and to think about what is good and to think about what is the common good for humanity. Um, so I, I mean, um, um, that's, um, that's, that's really something that we need to think about. Um, if you have anything to add to that and yeah, you are very welcome to do so. Um, so, um, it's really a lot of really good questions. So, yeah. um, if you if you could um, if you could um, comment on on um, yeah, so if you could just yeah yeah comment on I mean, on, um, on the things that interest you. So please. No, I mean I I read through it because there mostly there are also comments about what I've said, and I feel like um you you're basically like I hope that this is what you got out of. Um, the Bible study and if it is I'm really impressed and <laughs> I'm like um, okay great that um, it did come kind of through because yes I do feel like holiness is embodied all in all of us it is not limited to one place it's not only uh, it's not limited limited to human beings as I also wanted to share which is about that it that I for once or that I feel like it is limitless it is something that we can keep on um like it's something we small like in the in through the embodiment we got a small glimpse of it so uh we're still working through it and mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it's uh i don't know what if you manhe do you see any more questions um because i think mostly we covered it through or at least i think we did yeah, I think you are really interested in um, learning about the experience, your experience and your conversation with um, um, people whose religious traditions are different from your own. And how would you um, um, uh, talk with these, these friends um, about, um, um, about the gospel? So one of, one of those uh, questions, it's like, um, can holiness um, be applied to, uh, can holiness um, have, have um, the value um, that helped us to proclaim the gospel? Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I get the question right about how we can, uh, what- So the question, let me read yeah. that again. So yeah. should holiness as a definition applied to a place or thing? only have value in how it is used to proclaim the gospel? Um, so how, how do think, we yes, yeah, proclaim I mean, the course. gospel and in, in thinking about holiness? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying like, um, I'm just, um, as holiness, I would say is always gonna be there and each one, each person of us, it's all, it depends on us if we want to proclaim the message in the gospel, so it's, has nothing to do if it's if it's about holiness or not. It's about more the person and the people. Yeah, and um, I just saw the question: Is holiness limited to Jesus or a Christian? Do you find hope in conversation with your Muslim and Israeli friends? Um, I feel uh, like holiness is not limited to um, to Christians or to Jesus. As uh, that's what I mean. It's the whole world. So it's not only limited also to the Christian religion, but also to the Muslims and Israelis. Um, which, which I would say uh, Muslims and Jews as well. So, um, so it's more that it is all there, and it's up to us if we want to receive this holiness or if we if we do not want to receive it. So it's our choice. But God doesn't. Uh, there is no election or there is no special people. There is no special place. It's it's all in the whole world. It's all in every person, and it's and it's up to us um, if we want to receive it. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Sally. This is a really um, um, rich conversation, and you have um, given us so many things to think about. Thank you so much about. Thank you so much for your time and 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 um, the efforts that you put into uh, preparing this Bible study with us. Um, so. I think that some of the questions that um, that's actually have been um, covered um, by Sally's um, presentation. So if you would like to um, um, think more about all these questions, so I encourage you to go back to um, Sally's uh, presentation. Um, so again, thanks to everyone for joining us today. If you would like to share the recording for this session with others, please direct them to the Churchwide Assembly playlist in the ELCA YouTube account at youtube.com slash ELCA. Remember to join us next Sunday for the third Bible study in this series on the theme, Embody the Word. Thank you and take care. Thank you. <laughs>